UB's Insta handle. I am Lynn Lily, and today I am going to be teaching a UB Mini Masters art class. And I am so excited, guys. I've been waiting for this all week. It's gonna be really fun. Um, for those of you that don't know what UB is, you may be new to the Instagram handle or just maybe saw this live alert pop up, UB is an awesome school supply company that gives back to kids in need. Um, and I absolutely love it, one, for the give back component because kids having adequate school supplies um, and even art supplies is really, really important for their development. Um, and the second reason why I love it so much is because it's bright and it's colorful and you just can't help but being happy when you look at it. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I am Lynn Lily from Craftbox Girls. So on Instagram, I'm over at Craftbox Girls. Um, and what you'll find over on my Instagram handle and on my website, craftboxgirls.com, um, is really easy DIY home projects, kids crafts, artist tutorials, paper crafts. Um, I'm really passionate about creativity and teaching others to be creative. Um, but what I'm more passionate about is turning people that don't think they're creative or don't think they're an artist into someone who can create something magical. So that's a big passion of mine. Um, today, we are going to do a paint along brush stroke floral design. Um, this is geared towards kids, but I've had some adult friends who've taken a look at this and said they wanted to learn it too. So adults are welcome or grab your kids because this is family friendly. And so we're going to paint this. It's perfect for Mother's Day. So moms, if you're watching, grab your kids and they can make your gift right now. Um, I would love for you guys to tell me where you're watching from. Give me a shout. Give me a hello. I'm going to pull it up on my iPad over here because I can't really see the phone from here. So I want to make sure that I've got you guys up over here. We're getting lots of hellos. All right. So to get started, here is what you need. Um, I'm using a 12 by 12 stretched canvas. You don't have to have one of these guys. I just have a ton of these on hand. I use them all the time. You can also use a piece of cardstock, a piece of construction paper, a piece of watercolor paper, um, a piece of wood if you have it. So really any white surface will work for this. Um, you're also going to need a pencil. And then we're going to be using our UV washable paint brush pens. These are super cool. They have a brush tip on the end of them. If you don't have these at home, that's okay. Um, you can use a standard paint brush as well. These just make it a lot easier and quicker to create a design. Um, and then I do have a paint brush handy. Um, we're going to use the tip of this for one part to add some detailed designs and then we're going to use this to get some really good straight lines towards the end of our painting. Um, what I'm going to teach you today is simple blending and how brush strokes can turn into beautiful flowers. So really simple and easy. All right, so as we get started, what I'm gonna try and do here is, I know you might have a hard time seeing this, so I'm gonna draw or do what I need to, and then I will hold it up to you so you guys can see it. So step one, we're going to draw a vase, and we're gonna do it with a pencil because that helps us create nice lines, makes it easy, less likely to have mess ups. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sketch out a very, very simple vase. So check it out, very simple so far. And you wanna make sure that it's a few inches from the bottom because this vase is going to be sitting on a tabletop. And then I'm gonna draw just some scalloped curved lines on the top for the top of my vase, okay? And then I wanna draw my tabletop line. So about two inches up, from the bottom of my vase, I'm gonna just draw my tabletop line. Those are really the only two pieces that we need to draw. This will help us get started. Okay, and I'm gonna try and do the rest facing you so you guys can at least get a better view. All right, as you guys are tuning in, just give me some shout outs and some hellos. I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. All right, so you can choose whatever color you want for your vase or your tabletop. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my vase purple first. Now, when I'm painting, whether I'm using my UB um, brush tip pens or I'm just using regular washable paint and a brush, I always like to have a piece of paper um, over a side of me to just make sure my paint is flowing the right way, my brush isn't all gunky before I take it to my canvas. So I've got my purple started over here and what's great about these is you can squeeze them and the paint comes right out on your brush. So I'm gonna start and paint in my vase. And I'm doing purple, but you guys can do whatever color you want. 
and I can squeeze out the paint as I go and then spread it out. And if you do have some extra over on your paper um, from squeezing it out and testing it, you can easily just dab that up as well. And you wanna make sure that you follow your paint lines. So you can kind of see how I'm following my paint lines here. Now, if you don't end up covering up your paint lines, that's okay. You can always go back and erase that pencil mark once your paint is dry, but it's always nice to try and cover those paint lines up. Um, and I just squeezed a whole bunch of paint on my canvas so that I can kind of get through this part a little bit faster. Um, and I do try and tend to keep my brush strokes the same way, but sometimes when I'm going fast, it doesn't work out that way. You can always go back and do a second coat or do your brush strokes kind of all the same way for those finishing touches. But as we fill in the main part of our vase, we want to go ahead then and do our scalloped edges. So you're gonna be just a little bit more careful with these. So I'm gonna actually, instead of continuing my brush strokes up and down, I'm going to squeeze out just a little bit of paint so I have some to work with. And I'm gonna just try and follow my scallop lines, covering up that pencil line as I go. And then I'll go back and touch them up if I need to and fill them in. All right. So if you're painting along with me, please tell me in the comments. I love to kind of know who's doing what and what color would you paint your vase? Um, what would be your vase color? Tell me in the comments. I like to see it. I can see you guys right over here. Um, Jamie Page says, loves those paint pens. Yes, we've got Karen who gave us a heart. Amelia who says hello. Um, thanks for all the comments, guys. All right, so now I'm just taking my last finishing touches. I don't want my paint to be too gloppy, and I know gloppy is probably not a word, but if you follow me on Craftbox Girls, you know that I like to make up words. I like to make up my own crafting and art words, so gloppy is one of my words. So I'm just spreading out my paint, and then I can always go back when this dries and do a second coat, but we're gonna move on to our tabletop first, and if you go out of the lines just a little bit like I did, you can always fix it. All right. So we've got our vase done, and we can go back and touch it up and thicken up the paint if we want. Um, and now we're gonna do our tabletop. So I'm gonna do my tabletop blue, and we're gonna end up blending a little bit with this. So I'm gonna be using a light blue, and then I'm also gonna be using a darker blue glitter. So I love glitter, it's just fun. Um, and I even love glitter even more when it's in paint and it's not a mess. Um, I am a mom and have a two and a half year old, and I know the hate of glitter messes with those kids. My daughter loves glitter. We've had it all over our house. She's had dumped a whole jar on her head. So we've had tons of glitter messes in our house. So I understand if you um, don't like glitter, but um, the glitter in this paint is really fun because it's not messy and you still get that fun sparkle. So what I'm doing is I am going to paint my line that I drew, so that tabletop line that I created. I'm gonna go ahead and paint that in and then I'm gonna to wanna to make sure, and I'm gonna try and do this upside down for you guys. Um, I've gotten better at upside down crafting since I do so many lives, um, but I'm still not perfect at it. So I'm gonna try and get as close as possible to the lines of my vase. Um, and you know, you could layer it if you wanted. So if you wanted to paint the tabletop first um, and then come back and paint the vase over it, you could. It's just gonna take you a lot longer. So we're doing the fastest, easiest design possible um, so that you guys can make this whole design and we're gonna do this in less than 30 minutes um, so we're gonna just get some paint on here and I've used my blue a lot so let me squeeze out a bunch whoops and you'll see what I just did I accidentally just squirted some into my purple but no worries we'll actually blend it in so if you make mistakes um, as any person who has painted before you know mistakes happen one of the things that I have learned about painting, I love um, washable paints, I love acrylic paints, and I love watercolors. Um, I have learned to never judge a painting until it's dry. So I did not love the painting that we were doing today until it was dry. So you don't really see the full effect, and look, I just went back over it with my purple and got rid of that blue that I accidentally um, just dolloped a little bit in there. So you can always go back and fix it, but don't judge your painting, don't, decide if you like it or not yet until you're done. That to me I think is one of the most important lessons as an artist. Um, it doesn't really take shape until it's dry. 
Um, I do a lot of watercoloring and I usually hate my designs when I'm doing them because I'm super critical of myself. And then they dry and I love them. So um, just keep an open mind as you're painting. And we're gonna finish up our last little area right here and then we're gonna come back in with our blue glitter and we're gonna blend. So when I blend, I can do it two ways. So you can blend with that other color you're going to use with this brush pen, or you can take a dry brush, which I'll show you, um, and blend using a dry brush to get your colors in. All right, we're going right around our tabletop here. Okay, so here's what it looks like so far. Now we're going to take our blue glitter. So this blue glitter is so fun. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just draw some streaks of blue glitter. Nothing crazy, nothing perfect. Hold on, I, I clearly use my glitter a lot. So I'm just gonna put some dollops in where I see fit. And this is gonna help add some dimension. I love mixing two colors that are in the same shade palette. So a dark blue, a light blue, especially when you're doing something like a tabletop, it just really adds to it. So you can see I kind of glopped in, again, I'm using my, my words I make up. Um, I glopped in my paint. Now, I can use this brush to try and mix it in, but I prefer to take a dry brush and I'm gonna use my dry brush to just blend using some nice little stripes. And I'm gonna leave some of it pretty thick because I want a little bit of that dimension. And we're just gonna brush this in. I'm gonna try and do it upwards so you guys can see it. But we're gonna just brush this back and forth and that glitter starts to just kind of blend into our light blue. And you can get it um, as blended or as streaky as you want. It's totally up to you. But go ahead and move that paint around so that you do get a good kind of mixture and your color does stay somewhat even. All right, and if you've got too much paint on there, just use this brush to kind of pull some of that paint off dab it off on a paper towel or a piece of paper. If you've got your kind of working piece of paper like I do over here, um, you can do that. So we're gonna just add right there. And now don't forget about your edges. So I was kind of neglecting my edges. I'm just gonna take my brush real quick and go right over my edges. Um, it's a little bit easier with the brush because it's about the same size as my edge. And if you get some over, over here, just take your brush and dab it down. Same thing, I'm gonna skip my bottom one for right now just cause I can't really see down there. But, and then just kind of move my paint one more time. All right, if you're loving it, tell me. I love your feedback, guys. This is the first time I am teaching art class for UB. So any of your feedback is greatly appreciated. Okay, we got our tabletop. We're gonna come back and add some more to our tabletop and our base once it dries a little bit. But now it's time to do our flowers. So. Who loves painting flowers? I love painting flowers, guys. It is just one of my favorite things. Flowers are so pretty, they add some joy, especially being at home right now. Unless you've got fresh flowers in your yard, which I don't because I'm not a great gardener. Um, I love painting them and creating them and having them around my house. I think it just adds a pop of color and fun and positivity and we can all use that these days. Um, okay. So for my flowers, I'm gonna use a couple different colors and we're also going to blend in our colors as well. So we're gonna use orange, we're gonna use yellow, we're gonna use a light pink, and we're gonna use a red, okay? So we're gonna start off with our red and we're gonna do two different types of flowers. We're gonna do a rose and then we're gonna do what I'm gonna call, I don't even know, it's like my made up flower. It's like if a daisy folded itself in half, again. I am not an arborist or gardener, so I don't really know the right names of flowers. I just like to paint them. All right, so you want to make sure your, I'm going to make sure my red is going over here. Now, you don't want a ton of paint on your brush, so it is kind of a good idea to start it on a piece of paper and then get just a little bit on your brush. You can always go back and um, dip more in if you need to. All right, so what we're going to do is you wanna make sure when you paint your flowers that you kind of space them apart because we're going to add in our stems and our leaves last. So I'm gonna start over here. It looks like I got some purple on my fingers. So keep a paper towel handy because if you do get some paint on your hand, you don't want that to accidentally rub off on the canvas. So when you do this, and I'm gonna tilt it up so you guys can see it, you're gonna start 
with little u marks. So one little u, and then you do another little u that goes inside of it. So I'll hold that up so you guys can see it. So two u's, and then we're gonna continue to go around and keep adding in what I'm calling u's. They could be little half circles until I create a rose, okay? So that's step one. Now I'm gonna do a couple of these around before I finish that one off while I've got this brush in my hand. I'm gonna do another one up here and you can vary these in size. So you can do a smaller one, you can do a bigger one, you can apply more pressure and get thicker petals to your rows. Um, it's up to you and you can keep going. If you wanna make it bigger, just keep adding layers to it. This is really like a no-fail way. It can be as big, as small, and again, if you think you messed it up, don't judge it because trust me, it's gonna look good when it's dry. So we'll add, let's do maybe like one more down here. All right, so I'm gonna make this one a smaller one and then I'm gonna come back with, I'm gonna put some pink. So I've got some of my pink here and I actually have some white out of my plate. I'm gonna dip my pink and white together. I just added some white to that and we're gonna come back in. So we're gonna go back to our first one and we're gonna add in and blend as we go. So we're gonna add in some more little half circles, half U's, kind of in between those open lines and around the outside to kind of mush those together to give it some dimension and multiple colors. So check that out. Just like that, so we went over it, just like that, and then we're gonna keep doing that. So I'm gonna keep mixing my pink with just a dab of white that I already have over here, and I'm gonna come do the same thing into my other one. So you can leave them as they were when we first painted them. I just think this adds a little bit more to it. And we're gonna do the same thing on our third one. So we're gonna put this guy right there in here. And if you're loving this, let me know in the comments. I love your feedback. I'm going to check those comments in just a second. Okay. So now we're going to come back and do some more roses in just a second, but we're going to do some yellow flowers, which I'm going to call these half daisies. I don't know. I, it's if you would fold a daisy in half. If someone is a big gardener and knows the names of flowers, I would love for you to tell me what they are. Um, and I'm going to paint these upside down. So this might be a little challenging for me, but I'm gonna start over here, and as you're painting each flower, keep in mind how your bouquet is gonna to come together. So just kind of do it in like a, a circular, half circular motion like a bouquet um, would be. So for this, we're gonna use the same brush strokes, so we're gonna do it all from one point. So I'm gonna do this one off to the side, and we're gonna go up. So one little brush stroke, one, two, and it's okay if they all blend together, because we're gonna highlight them in just a second. So, you can see right there. See how it all came together, okay? And then I'm gonna add in just a few more of those. So, maybe we do one, mm, let's do one. It's kind of hard for me to tell upside down, but I'll do one right here. Um, and with me, I've already painted this design, but I guarantee that it's gonna look different. Um, really, every time I paint something, it looks different, <laughs> which is okay because no painting is the same. They're all unique. Um, and again, when you're doing these flowers, have a piece of paper or something off to the side because you don't want a ton of paint on these when you're putting it on the canvas. You want to be able to control just how much paint you're using. Um, and then maybe let's do, we'll do one more right here. So again, I'm just doing my brush strokes. And I'm going kind of heavy handed. And as I get further down, um, further up, I should say, I lift up my brush stroke. So um, I start with it heavy. And then as I pull my hand up, I lift it up. Okay, so just like that. Um, oh, thank you. I Some of these names are hard to say. Cassie Braun, hello. Roses look so pretty. Randy Cheryl says, thanks, keep, keep giving me that. That good positive vibes, I love it, guys. Okay, so we're gonna take our orange now. Um, and again, I'm gonna start my orange. I'm just gonna pull a little bit out of my paper so I can control how much is on my brush. And we're gonna use our orange to highlight our yellow flowers. So very, very lightly. So we don't wanna go pretty heavy handed on here. We're just gonna go super light and kind of fill in if there's really kind of any blanks 
And if you get a little, I got a little too much yellow on my orange brush there from a little glob, just dab that off. And we're going to just add those in. And if you think you need some more, we might want a little more over there. Just adds a little bit of dimension and character to your flowers. And you guys have to tell me if this looks good because I'm doing it upside down. So I can't really tell if I'm getting exactly what I want to, but I want you guys to get the full view of it. So, all right, we're gonna come back in one last time and we're gonna do pink and we're gonna add in some pink roses. So I'm gonna get my pink going over here and I'm gonna do, let's do a nice big pink one. And so when you're doing your flowers, again, this is a rose, so this is the same technique that we did with the red. Um, I just made that one a lot bigger. You wanna kind of keep in mind where your stems are going to come. So you wanna make sure that you're not gonna be blocking any of your flowers from having stems. So you kinda of wanna space them out. So try and visualize where you think your stems are going to be. And this one is a little bit messier, but remember what I said, we don't judge. All right, so I'm gonna actually pull some white in this one instead of, and I'm just gonna use my pink brush because I already have it in my hand. And you can easily wash the ends of these brushes. I just dip the brush in water when I'm done and wipe it down. Um, so I'm adding in some white into these. And again, I'm going just kind of in between those circles and those U shapes. So nothing crazy, just add that in. You can do as much or as little as you want. I'm gonna add some on the outside. And then you can kind of spread as it makes that lighter color pink, you can spread it around. All right, I think I have enough flowers for now. So I can easily go back and add in flowers if I need to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my green and we're gonna start doing our stems. So I've got two different colors of green here and we can use both or you can just use one. Um, just test out your colors to see exactly what they look like. So we've got like a neon and a more traditional green. You can also blend them over here on the piece of paper. So if you kind of want a fun color, I can blend these two together. Now, for our stems, we wanna start where our vase is. And so what I like to do is I like to do all of my stems first before I put any leaves in. So I'm gonna start over here and you wanna start on one side. And since this one's kind of going off, I'm gonna kind of put that one crooked, kind of so it's showing my flower is hanging out. Now, your stems can come from the same, st the stems can stem off from the same stem. <laughs> Let's say that five times fast, guys. Um, so I'm gonna have this one come up and you can go as heavy or as light-handed as you want, but you'll get an idea as you're going through here um, how like thick and thin you want your stems to be. For this one, I kind of want my flower to have a little bit of a base. I don't know if base is the right word, but I'm doing a little bit of a triangle right there that leads into it. And then this guy is gonna be kind of a short one. So this one's just gonna have a little bitty stem that goes right there. And then this one's gonna have a stem. It's little, little bitty stem. It's gonna come up to this larger red rose up here. And go light if you want. You can always come back and darken up your colors or thicken up your lines. So I do recommend trying to start a little bit thin. And what I'm doing over here on the side is I'm just squeezing out my paint so I can control how much is on my brush. So I'm gonna come up to my big guy up here, my yellow guy, and I'm gonna add the same kind of little um, triangular U-shaped base to my flower that I did on my other one. So in case you guys wanna see that, we just went right up there. And then I'm gonna bring this guy, connect him up to here. And then once we get these stems done, we'll be able to see where we can put in our leaves. So I'm gonna come down from this guy, down to my vase, and then I will add this one. We'll kind of come and swirl over to the base of this one. And I'll add a little triangle just to keep these guys consistent so it has a little bit of a thicker basin at the end. Okay, so we've got the stems of our flowers. Now, um, if you wanna go ahead and straighten up your lines, you definitely can, uh, but we're gonna jump right into making our leaves now. So with leaves, I always like to call my leaves my fillers, whether I'm painting or I'm making paper flower arrangements. 
um, or even doing paper flower wall murals. I like to use my leaves as my very last thing and I kind of use them to fill in and create a full bunch. So what we're gonna do is, and you can also add some vines too. Vines are a really great way. So I'm again gonna try and do this upside down so you guys get a good view. We're gonna do just very simple leaves. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. So all I'm doing is two lines that create what looks like a football. So think of the football shape when you're creating your leaves. So it doesn't have to be anything crazy. So maybe we do that. And then what I may do over here is take a little vine up to kind of bring my design up and out of my bouquet. And so I'm just adding that nice little vine right there. We can always come back to that and decide what we want to do with it. Same thing over here. So my small flower that's kind of hanging off the edge, I'm going to create another vine that comes off of there, or vine, a slash, a stem, whatever you want to call it. And then we're going to create a leaf that's coming off of that. So that brings our design out just a little bit more. And then we're going to continue to go all the way around and add our leaves in and add vines as we see fit. And as you kind of are looking at your design, you can see what you think looks best and fill in as you see fit. Maybe you don't even want any leaves. You don't have to. Um, you can stop. Your work of art is up to you and it will be gorgeous and pretty no matter what you do to it, guys. Um, your art is beautiful and I want you to know that. So keep that in mind. Um, everyone has the ability to be an artist. All right, so I added a little leaf right there on this guy and then I'm gonna take this out just a little bit to add to kind of match how this comes out over here. I wanted that side to come out as well. Um, and then maybe we do one more leaf right here. You guys tell me how it looks because I can kind of see the mirror version in the phone, but you guys get the, the real look and I'll take a look at it in a second. But what do you guys think so far? You guys liking it? Oh, you guys are giving me some great feedback. Thanks guys. All right, so I'm gonna take a look at it and see really quick from my perspective, what I wanna add. So I think we wanna add, maybe we do off of here, we make this a leaf. So what I'm doing with this vine, so I took that vine that I put up and I kinda of turned it into a leaf. And then we're gonna make a little sprout of a vine that comes off of it. So just like that. And then maybe we add, guys, I could sit here and add to this forever. I could keep going and going. I'm gonna add one more little vine to try and balance this out. But, so you guys can see it, that can go up. And I'll show you exactly what I did in one second. I'm gonna draw another leaf right here, just like that. All right, so I think we're, we're somewhat to a good space. And I just set my hand in the blue, so I'm gonna wipe that off. All right, so we've got our flowers done. We're not done yet, guys. Um, so I got them to kind of where I want them. Um, you can keep going if you want. You can add more flowers, but we're going to stop there for the time sake because I know you guys don't have all day. Um, but keep in mind, if you did miss any of this and you joined the live late, we're going to be saving this to UB's IGTV. So you can go back and rewatch it when we're done. Um, and if you've got a friend, tag a friend that you think may like it as well or their kid is looking for something fun to do. Um, I would love for you to share it. We gotta share the crafty love these days. All right, so now my purple is still a little wet, um, but we're gonna do the other part that I wanted to do. So we're gonna take the end of our brush, and I've got some white paint over here that I squeezed out of my brush earlier, and I'm gonna dip the end of my paintbrush in here, and just to add a little pizzazz, I'm gonna add some dots right here. Um, and all I'm doing is just lightly touching my paintbrush to my canvas um, and just letting that paint that's on the end of the brush. And I can get about two to three little dots out of it before I have to re-dip it in my brush. So all the way around there. And then we're going to go to here. And now you may want to come back and do a second coat um, on your vase. So you would want to wait to do this until... Um, after you do your second coat, but for time's sake, I wanted to just show you this fun little detail that you can add to your canvas. It just kind of gives it that finishing touch and something that's easy um, and really quick to do. And then last but not least, 
we're gonna finish our table. So my blue is pretty wet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my brushes to just brush off my excess wet paint because I wanna do this next step. Um, so this is not something you have to do, but if you are in a rush and you've got some wet paint that's still sitting on the surface, just take a dry brush and brush off that excess paint. It'll help it dry faster. Um, it'll give you a nicer, even surface. So I just pulled off some of that excess paint so that we can do the last step, which is going to be to add some plaid lines to our table. So I like to use tablecloths and I like pattern tablecloths. So for me, um, I wanted to just add some fun to it. You can do whatever you want. You could do polka dots, you could just do stripes, you could leave it as is. Um, so I'm gonna use one of my brushes that I was using earlier. So I just have a cup of water here off to the side that I'm using to clean my brush. And I am just using my paper towel to make sure I got the majority of my color off. And I'm gonna use this white paint that I've got in this dish. And now I don't want my lines to be perfect because I think the imperfection makes these really fun. So I'm gonna just take my brush and I'm gonna drag it straight up and down, um, up or down, depending on which way you're painting. Make sure you have a good bit of paint on your brush, and especially mine's a little wet, so it's gonna blend a little bit more. If you wait till it's completely dry, you'll get a better, crisper white line. Um, and I'll show you what mine looks like that I painted earlier that is dry, and I kind of waited a little bit more time. Um, but I'm just drawing my lines, and I'll show you these in one second as I get them done, and you can make them thick and thin. You can go back over them as you need to. Again, don't use a ruler. They can be imperfect. I think imperfect is a little bit more fun. So I started with some lines, just like that. And then I am going to now do my horizontal lines. So these I'm gonna try and run the entire way. And I'm going to go over it just to make it a little bit darker. Make sure you have a good bit of paint on your brush. And again, they don't have to be straight. And you can vary the thickness of your lines. So you can make them thin, thick, the widths don't have to be the same. Um, it can be totally imperfect, which I think makes it a little bit more quirky and fun. Um, and if you guys haven't noticed yet, I'm a little quirky, so it kind of goes with my personality. Um, I am all about the imperfect. So that is my life and any moms out there that have a young child and are full-time working moms or moms that are just raising their kids full-time, you know, you gotta learn to love the imperfect, right? <laughs> we embrace the imperfect. So there you go. We just added a quick tablecloth to it. So really simple and easy. I'm gonna show you guys the dried one. I've got it setting right here. I had it setting up so I could just look at it as a guide so I remember to do somewhat of the same design. So check it out. That's what it looks like when it's fully dry but really easy and fun. And you guys can get creative with this. I just taught you some techniques that you could use a whole bunch of different ways. You could do this on a card for Mother's Day. Um, you could just do all the flowers together and not put them in a vase and just do a whole floral design. Um, there's tons of different things that you guys can do. I want to see what you guys make. So I hope you will do something with the techniques I taught you. I hope you'll make this or do something similar. So make sure that you tag me at Craftbox Girls. Um, and go follow me over on Instagram. Um, I'd love to have you a part of what I call my craft squad. Um, and make sure that you tag Yubi as well. Um, we would love to see and share what art projects our mini masters do um, after seeing our workshop. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you loved it. Keep in mind, the UB Mini Masters art classes are taking place every Wednesday. Um, next Wednesday, the class will be at 1 p.m. Eastern right here. So make sure that you do like the UB page so that you get the notifications um, when the next artist goes live with another great workshop. Um, and make sure you share. I want to see what you guys do. Um, and hopefully, I will see you over on my page at Craftbox Girls and we can continue to create together. All right, friends, I know you're all at home. I'm at home in my basement. Um, it is a tough time for all of us, but let's be there for each other and let's share our creativity because that's something that is a point of happiness um, that can help us all get through this. So thank you so much for being here with me today. I will make sure that I save this to UB's Insta TV account so you can go back and rewatch it if you do want to paint at a later time or share it with a friend. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. Be kind and inspire someone. Thanks so much for crafting and painting with me today. Bye, guys.